in this video we're going to focus on how we can play around with creating two scales here for a combo line chart as you can see here the bars are directly matched with the numbers here of the millions and the line here is matched with the weekly sales in quantities that is just a absolute number here which is below the 20. So we're going to play around with it and how we can swap them, how we can give the priority so that the line will be here on top and not behind of these bars here. So let's start to look how we can do this. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers' questions, which is how to show two scales in the bar line combo chart in Chart.js. And this question came from one of my other videos about how to create a stacked bar chart with a line chart in Chart.js. And if you scroll down, you can see this question came from Jonathan Ui Jong. So a special thank you to Don Jonathan for asking the question and this is what he asked. Thanks, this is very helpful for me. Is it possible if line chart use a second axis? I added a Y2 in the config scale with the position right and it can show a second axis with the correct scale. But the line chart still uses the left scale. I want the line chart use the second axis since it has a different scale. Please help, thank you. All right, so I assume based on your question that you definitely want to have a combo line chart, so or a bar and a line chart, So, but the bar will be based on that and the line chart will be based on the other side. All right, so let's start to work on this. So first thing what we need is a default code. Make sure you go to charges3.com, getting started. Scroll down here and copy this entire chunk of code. And once you did that, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains the JavaScript of it. So I'm going to put this in here, and then go to cut out this and put that in there. All right. Save this, refresh. There we are. So now we have this, and what I want to do now is I want to add up here a line chart. So to do it very simple, I'm just going to duplicate this entire data set, and then put a comma here, paste that in there, and then what we can do here, remove this. I'll just say here the type and this type equals line. That's basically what you have to do to create a combo line chart. And if I save this now and refresh, you can see here now we have a nice uh, line chart here. All right. So what I want to do next is, of course, have some different values. I want to have two different values here. So it's very easy to see if it's working or not. So let's say here, this is the weekly sales. Let's say sales in dollars. And then I'm going to just put in here a uh, high amount here. So there you are. So that would be, oh, making sure that this is all easy to spot here. So we have this here. And then, of course, for the line chart, I'm going to remove everything except for the last line, which is a black line. So that will make it just easy to spot. And this will be weekly sales in quantity. Save, refresh. There we are. And now, of course, you can see this just doesn't work, of course, because here the value will be pushed down here automatically. All right. So what we're going to do now is, of course, to create the item. So to do this, we need to make sure we have a, another scale. Or basically, and we have to build our second scale. But what we need to do is, very clearly indicate which one will get where. So in this case, I don't know exactly if the line chart should be on the right side or the left side. So I'm going to just show you how you can move them around. But let's first assume that this line chart here will be on the right side. So I'm going to put in here and enter. And then just below the type, I'm going to say the following. I'm going to say here a new axis that I want to use. So what we can do here in this case, I'll just say here y axis and this axis ID will be in this case, let's say the quantity. Quantity. And we have the other y axis here. Let's go up here. I'm going to put this in here and that's the default. I will say this is just the y. The reason I'm using y is because it's already built in here. And it's very easy to use, but you can use anything you want. You might say here uh, USD, USD or dollars, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But the moment you change this, it will impact your code. So you need to be consistent with that. Because what you're really doing here is to specify what we call an object. We're going to specify an object in here. This Y here is, in other words, just because 
this x y axis id is y here and this is a default so that's why it's easy so if we say here dollars all right then we need to make sure that this here is dollars as well or else it will not work so let's do that one for now then and then here we have another scale which would be here the quantity so that's why here because here we specify the object now we can use this object here very similar to the time structure so then in here we can also put in something so what I want to do here, just to be very specific, I just want to say here the dollars, so what we need to do here. We're going to say type will be linear. This is important. And next, comma, I'm going to say here the position will be equal to left. Then we can copy this here. I'm going to, we can just also begin the zero, put that in there, and then say equal to right. So now if we save this, refresh, you can see here we have now nicely these things. And you can see here for some reason, or at least now, and this is just a coincidence, that these grid lines are perfect match because all we did was putting zeros here. But I don't want this perfection here because, you know, it's normally not that perfect. So what I want to do here is just to give it a different numbers. So let's say you're 20, and this would be 25. And this will be 17. If I save this now, we should have now different numbers here. Beautiful. All right. So now we have all of this. And of course, now we have a issue. How do we solve this nicely? As you can see here, our grid lines are based on the millions here. And then we have here the 18 and then they're not really aligned. So we have to select which one we want to remove. In this case, I would say to remove the lines on the numbers here. So that's what we're going to do now. So what we're going to do now is basically the following here. We're going to scroll down here and then in the scales, let's say for the quantity, because that is the one we want to hide this grid lines. We just type in here grid. And then here in the grid, we're going to just indicate the display and display equals false. Save that, refresh, and there you are. So now you can see here, those has been removed and this is here. If you don't like this, maybe this is even better. Then, of course, you can swap them around here. So we can even change this. That could be here up. It's one or the other. Maybe that's even better because that one tends to have lesser grid lines compared to the other. Let's save that. Refresh. So you can see here, this is still quite acceptable. This could be 2,250,000. Two, two so that's quite acceptable. Of course, it's just an approximately. All right. So now we're done here. And before I even want to swap then, what I want to do here is you can see, pay attention here, you see these lines here? This means basically we have a layer. And what is happening now is that the line here is being drawn first and afterwards they draw on top the bars. And of course that means that here these are being overlapped. And this is, this is all right. But if the transparency here would be solid, Let's move this here. You will see that then we get an issue. Save this, refresh. Now you get a new issue. So let's solve this now. Or let's uh, let me undo this first. And let's solve this to make sure that the black line will be on the very front. So to do that, in the data sets, all you have to do here put a comma. Indicate here the order. And what I want to do here is I want to say here this will be order number one, and the other one will be order number two. And number two if I'm not mistaken, should indicate the highest priority. Oh, sorry, it's exactly the opposite. We have to do here number one and here number two. Meaning number one, the lower the priority, meaning the higher or the higher of importance, meaning it will be on the very top. And the, the higher the order means that it will be at the back. So if I copy this, you should now see here as well, nicely, that we're still on top. Because we give this order one and this is order two. That meaning the lowest number is the highest priority and the higher number meaning is a lower priority. All right. So now we have this final item here, switching or swapping these, these two. How can we do this? Well, you can see here position, just indicate here right. And then we just put it here left. Save this. Refresh. And now what happened? We just swap these scales here and that's basically how we can play around with the scales and creating two scales with the combo charts.